Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Sunday Staff Debrief. I'm your host, Nicole. I'm joined by Juicy and Rich. And this week, we have a very special guest, James Boone from the University of Nottingham and Lancaster. James is here in Utila doing his thesis for his PhD on lionfish. James, what exactly is a lionfish? So lionfish are fish native to the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Um, they're invasive to the Western Atlantic. Uh, they were first introduced off of Florida in the mid-1980s. They're really pretty fish with long, feathery, dorsal and pelvic um, and pectoral fins. And they were um, released by aquarium owners who used to keep them as pets. But these um, aquarium owners first, when they first got them, they realized the day after that all the other fish in their, in their tanks were completely gone because they just ate them all. So what happened was they were probably released off of Florida and um, since then their populations have expanded rapidly um, as far north as New York and as far south as Brazil. And they're a real problem species in the, in the entire region. So yeah. Awesome. So what was your inspiration for doing your PhD thesis on lionfish? Um, invasive species are a growing threat globally. Um, mainly because of globalization and the increase of people, movement of people and goods um, around the world has meant that uh, species are being introduced to areas beyond their natural ranges. And when a species is introduced to an area outside of their natural range, there's the possibility that they could become um, a detriment to the novel ecosystem that they're introduced to. So, um, and we don't know a great deal about invasive species and the ecology of invasive species because they are relatively um, contemporary threat. So uh, studying invasive species and lionfish are like the poster child invasive species globally and the most studied marine invasive species. So, um, so yeah, they're really cool. Wow. Yeah. So what exactly are you doing on Utila as far as research for your thesis? So um, the, the PhD is looking at the ecology of lionfish um, from uh, across the whole depth gradient of a coral reef. So most coral reefs are about um, most coral reefs that we go to as divers, as scuba divers, are between zero and about uh, 30 meters. Um, however, there's a whole other habitat below that, between 30 and 150 meters. And these are called mesophotic coral ecosystems. And they're one of the least studied environments on Earth, um, mainly because uh, it's so hard and in inaccessible to get to, as you guys, as you guys know. <laughs> um, so uh, this really understudied ecosystem um, is potentially threatened by invasive lionfish, and we know so little about it. So it would be a really um, important um, avenue for research. So yeah, that's why I'm oh, here. Awesome. And when it comes to your research, how, where do divers come into play? How did Juicy and Rich here get involved in your research? Well, I needed divers and tech divers to go down to these mesophotic coral ecosystems, so below 30 meters. So as I'm on Utila, I naturally came to UDC. Yeah, we were really excited when James approached us to help him gather the lionfish from different depths. Um, as he mentioned earlier, it has a lot to do with specific ranges within the water column. Um, and us being avid tech divers and going to these depths a lot that are a little more inaccessible to him, it was uh, easy for us. It's always nice to go on tech dives, but it's even better when you have a specific mission and something to do, and helping him out was a, was a big draw for it, for sure. We were both interested right from the get-go. Yeah, I remember their meeting. It was... Um... It was really fun. You were telling us the things that we, you wanted to achieve, and myself, Juicy, and uh, another another gentleman, Elliot. Our eyes just lit up. We we're like, "Yeah, okay, we'd love to help. Give us a mission to get down there and really get into it." And yeah, so see if we can see if we can help you out. It was fantastic. Speaking of eyes, can you tell us how you use the eyes of the lionfish in your research? So my research question, the main reason I'm here, is to look at where the lionfish move to deeper depths as they grow older in a process called ontogenetic niche shifts. Um, so this is quite big sort of conservation implications. If that, you know, if, if, if we're culling lionfish on the shallow water reefs, but we're missing deeper individuals, and these deeper individuals are older and more mature, then they could potentially um, undermine culling efforts on shallow water reefs because lionfish eggs are buoyant. So if older, more, um, more mature individuals are at greater depths, then um, potentially uh, shallow water culling is sort of totally undermined. So my research is looking at whether they do move to deeper depths as they grow older. Um, so the way we're going to go about answering this question is by taking the eyes of lionfish. So the eyes of all vertebrates 
uh, the eye lenses of all vertebrates, sorry, grow in layers like an onion. So the eye lens looks like a, like a pickled onion or like a little marble or something. And um, they're really, really small and it's just behind the pupil. And they grow in layers, so just like a tree ring. And each layer, once it's grown, once it's been laid, becomes totally inert, meaning that is a unchanged tissue sample from a previous stage in a lionfish's life. So using these layers, we can go back in time, back in time through the lionfish's life, and um, collect samples from their, um, from their tissue. And in, within their tissue, uh, we can then work out broadly where they were feeding, uh, the broad habitat they were feeding, and whether they are moving to deeper depths. So, so yeah, I've been, I've been grabbing eyes and, and everything recently. Very cool. So you use the eyes. Is there any other part of the body that you use for your research? We use the, uh, the gut contents as well. So although the eye lenses can provide a really long-term um, idea of where the lionfish are feeding, it's not very precise, whereas the gut contents provides a really precise but quite short-term um, indication of their of the feeding preferences. So we've also been cutting open the guts and looking looking around in there, and we've also been taking um, some of the ear bones of, of, of the lionfish. And the otoliscent fish uh, are, are a really good way to, to age, age the individual. So by using a combination of these things, using the ear bones to age, using the gut content to provide a short-term uh, indication of feeding preferences, and then using the eye lenses to provide a long-term indication of feeding preferences, we can um, hopefully answer answer the research question as to whether they move to deeper depths as they, as they grow older. And are you finding a lot of lionfish around Utila that are at that older age or that older stage? So w with fish, um, as they as they get older, they grow larger. Mm -hmm. So um, we've got a few, we had a few big ones in the in the freezer, uh, mm -hmm. caught caught by these guys, and. Um, but, but we're seeing a, a real range in, in ages, so in a real age, age in sizes. But uh, we can't ID the, uh, identify the, the age just yet because we haven't looked at the otters under, under the microscopes yet. So, okay. so, yeah. And Juicy, you wrote the Paddy specialty for UDT for um, lionfish containment, is that correct? Yes, I wrote the specialty in 2011 for a couple of reasons. The first lionfish that was officially spotted um, and documented by scientists was by an organization that used to be here in Utila called UCME, the Utila Center for Marine Ecology, and that was in 2009 at a dive site on the north side called Ironbound. And the government then got involved with UCME's suggestion of giving spears. So they started to give spears to the dive shops, and in those days they gave a license to the dive shop manager and a bunch of spears, and they didn't teach anyone how to use them. They just said, here are the spears, go shoot lionfish. Um, I remember vividly being on a dive one day at Black Hills, and I saw a diver with a spear pointed straight up in the air, looking around for their buddy, and the buddy was above them, deflating their BCD, and neither one of them knew that the other one was there, and I thought, oh, they're going to deflate and go right into that spear. And between that incident, or instance, and thinking about what will happen if people go around using these spears that aren't trained to use them, I decided to write the specialty um, to teach people how to use the spears and a huge emphasis on, as well, what happens when you miss or what will you hit when you miss, uh, as well as informing people about the, the um, invasion of lionfish. Because I remember the first time I went to Asia, uh, like James said, where they're native to, I was thrilled to see a lionfish. Mm -hmm. And at the time, it wasn't so well known. So people would come here to, to Utila or to UDC, and I was worried that they'd stay I was just on a dive in the Philippines last year and there was no one shooting lionfish. Why do they kill all the lionfish here? So I wanted us to be really vocal about the, that it was a problem and that we weren't just going out shooting these fish for no reason. Um, they're one of the most beautiful fish in the sea, in my opinion. Um, so we, we got the spears from the government, but they didn't teach anyone how to use them. So that's when I decided to write the course. I had a little bit of experience spear fishing with, with that type of mechanism with the, with the sling um, in different parts of, of the world. Um, so I decided to write the specialty, and it's been hugely popular since then. It's one of the most popular specialties we teach. And Rich, you teach the specialty. Mm -hmm. Do you enjoy teaching it? Yeah, it's a really fun specialty to teach. Uh, like Juicy said, it's probably our most common specialty that we teach at the moment, uh, ahead of other things like nitrox or deep that we offer as well. Uh, it's really fun. Um, it, get, it creates a great atmosphere on the boat. Uh, the course isn't very long. We have a theory session 
quit going uh, in the confined water where we just hone a few skills and then we go out and we're actively hunting lionfish. Um, so it's really, really fun. The course is obviously a lot of fun. They get a certification, but also we actively take part in the culling of lionfish as well. So it's a really good conservation course as well. It's fantastic. Uh, we teach it at not only um, student level, but we also teach instructors here too. Um, so we have people who can go forth into the rest of the Caribbean and continue to spread the, the ethos of culling the lionfish to, to um, try to do something with the invasive, invasive species that we have. Awesome. And do you also teach people how to cook the lionfish? <laughs> uh, personally, no. Uh, I don't like to eat fish, um, but there's lots of things that people can do with the fish. Uh, they can take them home themselves and, and, and cook them. We have knives and, and shears here for people to, to do that. Uh, sometimes they get disposed of. Some people aren't, don't want to, to eat them and things like that. And that's perfectly fine. It's a conservation effort. But the other thing we can do on the island is donate them to restaurants. There are plenty of restaurants here in Utila that will take the, the fish from you, uh, sometimes even paying, and they'll serve them in their restaurants. We have sushi restaurants. We can make live fish burgers, uh, sometimes just steaks and stuff like this if it's a nice big one. Uh, that can be something that's fantastic to do. Actually, during the pandemic, um, we were not allowed to go diving, uh, which sucked a lot. Most of us love diving. And we we had an agreement, thanks to uh, a, a gentleman that works at the shop called Sarge, who, who organized with the mayor that we could go out and hunt lionfish as long as we promised to donate to families who were, you know, had fallen on hard times. Um, and we did. We went out a couple of times, I think three times in the end. And we, we, we ended up catching 100 or more lionfish and donated to the local population who then you obviously you know, use it to eat in, in a particularly tough time for everybody. So that was absolutely fantastic. Wow, that's amazing. So when it comes to lionfish, we all know for the most part that the spines on the lionfish are actually venomous. Um, have any of you had any close calls or witnessed any injuries due to lionfish stings? I'm happy to say that I've never been stung by a lionfish. Yeah, I, me too. I'm very glad that I haven't. From times I've seen it happen to people. It can be quite painful. It's not lethal. Um, it can create a little bit of shock due to the pain, but it's not something that's going to kill you. Um, but it's meant to be, it's very painful, but I'm happy I've not been stung by a lionfish. The close calls I've had have been um, nurse sharks and other animals coming along trying to eat the fish that you have in the container. Um, and I've seen actually um, eels attacking lionfish that hadn't been shot yet, but someone was about to shoot them. Uh, and this was quite a few years ago, actually. So there's been people that say there's no evidence of active of animals actively hunting lionfish. I would disagree. I've seen it happen with my own eyes. And what about you, James? I had one out of water close call, and it was one of the first times I'd met these guys, and they had collected all these lionfish for me, and it was amazing. I was you know, trying to keep up a good impression, and I put my hand in this call box without realizing there was a lionfish in there, and um, it very gently just sort of like moved its spine over my hand and with lionfish um, if you get envenomated by lionfish you know within 10 seconds whether the venom's gone to your bloodstream so I was had my hand in this school box and I was counting for 10 seconds and these guys were talking around me and my I had a colleague at Opwell who was talking to me and I was like in my own world counting to 10 and fortunately there was no reaction after 10 seconds and I could carry on with trying to keep up appearances but um, as I was walking out, just having the venom on my hand was like, causing a, a slight bubbling of the skin. Uh, it's like a really light nettle sting. sting. So, um, so yeah, that's as close as I've got. That's one of the really interesting things about lionfish, actually, is they can still sting you after they're dead. Mm. Um, it's not a function of their body that, that, it, that stings you. There's basically a, a venom sac, a hypodermic needle is their spine, and it's covered by a sheath of skin. And so when you touch the spine, you needle goes into you, you push the skin down around the, the spine and it squeezes the sac at the bottom and it's basically a product of how hard you touch it. It's how much venom you get. It's not something like a snake where it's controlling yeah. it and, and doing mm. it to you. So I've heard of people getting stung by lionfish when they're on the cutting board and it's sticking off the, the, the edge of the table and they bump their stomach into it. Um, so yeah, it's something you have to re still be really careful with even after it's dead. So for the people at home, what can they do can, to contribute to the lionfish container effort? I think there's quite a lot you can do in just raising awareness and, and looking at the resources available to look at the um, information on lionfish invasions and, and, and management. There's a, there's a wealth of resources out there. So yeah, have a look online and there'll be loads to, to sink your teeth into. 
massively and they, they can they can eat them as well you know when you come to a, an island where you know they are invasive um, in the western atlantic caribbean regions eat them go to restaurants and choose to eat that fish instead of snapper or barracuda or something like this uh, live fish is a delicacy so i'm told um, choose to choose to eat them take them out of the fish the more the the demand goes the supply must must follow that will mean that more people are going out and trying to cull more and more and more so that would be the biggest thing i think for for trying to trying to get that under control when you're in places that have uh, invasive lionfish, then you can enroll in courses like we have here at UDC, um, help out, go out, do some dives, clean up the reef, and you'll have a ton of fun doing it, and it's good for the environment. Amazing. Well, thank you, as always, to our panel, and especially thank you to James. If you like this episode and you want to help us grow our channel, make sure you... Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. And leave a comment below. See you all next week.